I have created a separate application for this, but the implementation is same as that of the previous application. Only some of the stuff is changed. We'll see that and we'll start the application and test it. If you see here in the build.gradle, apart from having these libraries, same as that of the previous application, we have added two more libraries over here. One is the key cloak spring boot starter and another is key cloak servlet filter adapter one thing to note here is the implementation of key cloak with spring boot 3 works only if you are using these libraries with version 22 and above apart from this if you see our main class is same there is no change over here and in the controller it's same and we do not have any annotation over here. As you can see, entities are also same. There is no change. Repositories as well. The change is in the security config here. If you see, we do not have the method level security added here because we are not using the OAuth 2's authentication and authorization. Instead, we are using Keycloak's authentication and authorization. To enable this Keycloak level, authentication and authorization what i'm doing is i'm adding a filter after bearer token authentication filter and here if you see in this create policy enforcer filter what we are doing is we are creating an object of servlet policy enforcer filter and within this filter object we are overriding the policy enforcer config this is because we want to tell the servlet policy enforcer filter that i have my key clock specific configurations and i want to add those key clock specific configurations for this policy enforcer config and if you see here in this part of the code i am mapping the policy enforcer config class with a json file and this json file is placed in the resources here ideally you can place this json file anywhere in the application but that path should be in the class path since resources is in the class path and this is a configuration file i have placed it in the resources if you see here we have very basic configurations added the ream name is the dive dev as you can see here this is our ream name and auth server url is this resource name or the client name so this is the client name spring boot be and the client secret is this one you can just check over here yeah so in this configuration what basically it does is it maps all of the properties from this json to policy enforcer config and whenever the application is started and test is going on it will check for the authentication and authorization based on this configuration let's start the application and see if this application works run a spring boot and as we have this swagger let's see if we are able to access this it says not allowed or we are not authorized to access this path so for this what we need to do we need to add this path for swagger ui as well as for the open api docs we need to add them as the public api paths so for that what we can do is we need to add a property called paths and this paths will have path property and enforcement mode property here the path is this same how we had in our previous applications and enforcement mode is disabled in a sense it says the application do not try to authenticate or authorize for these two paths let me restart the application application is started let's reload there you go and since in our use case diagram the restaurant list and the menu are public if you try to access them they are not accessible because we did not add these two apis in the public path let me add those as well stop 
So we have added these two paths. Let me start the application again. And there you go. And if I try to access the menu, this works as well because these are public APIs now. Now I would like to update the price for this samosa masala. The ID is 2 and instead of 190, uh, let me change it to 200. That can be done on this API. Item ID is 2 and 200. Execute. It says you do not have the access and if you see in the curl command, we are not sending any bearer token here. So for that, let me authorize with any user. Here we do not have any restriction for this. By default, owner had the access to this REST API. We will use Suresh. And Suresh in our case, is the manager authorize and try to update so it was successful let's see if the value is reflecting over here execute there you go now the curl command also has the authorization bearer token if we see this token jwt.io the user is Suresh and the rim role is manager in a sense any user can access this because we have added the configuration in the client authorization saying the role must be a default roles dive dev and every user that is created on this ream will have this role so that's it for this video we'll see in our next video on how to configure for each of the rest apis thanks for watching